why are all of these places hiring but like won't hire well over 3,000 jobs that is the low ball estimate of how many jobs in total i've applied to since i graduated college in the winter of 2021 statistically job openings on the market are at an all-time high why does it feel like it's absolutely impossible to get a job right now well i'm about to tell you why but the issue is right in front of you when you open up your linkedin and you look at all your job applications what do you see right away only one of them says that it was even viewed and most of them just all go completely unviewed and untouched and that's because most of these jobs aren't actually real and i can confirm this now as someone who worked within a company and whose friend worked within a very large company we'll call saline forces one day I noticed they had hundreds and hundreds of jobs listed on LinkedIn and I was like, oh, I should apply and come work with you. It would be fun. And he said, none of those jobs are probably real. We just keep posting the same jobs over and over again. And most of them aren't even real so that it looks like we're constantly growing and doing well to people on the outside. And most companies do this. Even one of the companies I worked for did this. We would always have a couple jobs posted for our department just in case like the perfect Goldilocks person came along to fit it. But for the most part, it wasn't really a real job. They're referred to as ghost jobs, but there's no way of knowing at first glance which ones are real and which ones are fake. So they all go into counting to these numbers that allegedly the job market has 1.4 positions posted for every person looking. Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Base Politics and you're watching my show, Hannah Explains It All, where every week I help you understand the political and economic decisions that are impacting your life the most. If you find this series helpful, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment and subscribe to the channel and check out older episodes in the series. This week, we're talking about a question I have seen circulating all over the internet, which is why can I not get hired? I cannot tell you how many videos I've seen on TikTok of people saying they have applied for hundreds, even thousands of jobs and are getting absolutely no response. Now, obviously, I can't vet these people's resumes, but many of them claim to be very qualified for the positions that they're seeking, to have a lot of work history, and yet they are getting absolutely no traction. And honestly, I feel for these people on a very deep level. When I graduated college, it was shortly after the Great Recession and the economy had still not bounced back meaning it was really tough to get a full-time job, especially if you really cared about which industry you were going to work in. For me, that was music and then later politics, which are already kind of difficult careers to get into. And I had to hustle significantly just to get a full-time salaried nine to five job, which I've never taken for granted since. But what's different about that time period and now is that the current administration is claiming the economy is great. Well, thanks to the American people, America now is the strongest growth the lowest inflation rate of any major economy in the world. It's because of you. They're saying hundreds of thousands of new jobs are being created every single month. Today, I'm happy to report that the state of the union and the state of our economy is strong. Add that all up, it means we've created 12 million, 12 million jobs since I took office. That means we have created more jobs in two years than any presidential term. They're saying hundreds of thousands of new jobs are being created every single month. The unemployment is really, really low, and therefore the economy is booming. In fact, they think the economy is going so great, they've labeled it Bidenomics. The press has uh, started to call my plan Bidenomics. I mean, that's a special kind of stupid. And they are so confused as to why nobody seems to believe them and consumers aren't buying what they're selling. Now, the lady in the video I played you actually did a really good job of explaining one reason you might be applying to jobs and not hearing anything back. But there's another side of the picture she didn't touch on, and that's what I want to cover with you today, and that is the public policy government side of the equation. It's really important to understand that the unemployment rate and the jobs numbers are vital for Biden's claim that the economy is in good shape. In fact, they're pretty much the only thing he can point to to back up that claim. There are a few basic economic markers that people typically look at to determine the health of an economy at a given time. So one of those markers is inflation, which I'm pretty sure everybody knows is not a pretty picture right now. Now, the administration keeps trying to claim that they've solved inflation. They say it's been cut. But it's important to know that inflation is actually still growing. It's just not growing at as fast of a rate as it was before. In fact, inflation in December was still over 3%. So prices are still getting higher. The next thing you can look at is something called the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And this data is also pretty negative for the Biden administration. My research found that consumer prices for all items rose 3.4% from December 2022 to December 2023. So that's another big 
X for them. Another factor you can look at to determine the health of an economy are interest rates, which are of course still over 7%, and that is much higher than the interest rates we saw pre-pandemic or pre-Biden. And then there's GDP, which once again is not looking all that good for them. In fact, the conference board economic forecast for the U.S. economy in the next couple months is pretty negative. They say we forecast two quarters of slightly negative GDP growth in quarter two and quarter three for 2024 that will be broadly felt across the economy. Great. You can look at a few other factors like consumer confidence, trade, the housing market, none of which are thriving right now either. So that leaves unemployment and job growth. And luckily for the Biden administration, these numbers are a bit fungible and the vast majority of Americans are not taught how to actually read the data underneath the headlines. And that is very, very important. They are counting on you not being able to actually read and interpret data so that they can gaslight you and convince you the economy is better than it is. So if you're one of the millions of Americans who's looking for a new job right now and can't get one, you're not crazy. You're not alone. You're just not being told the truth. The first thing you need to know is how they calculate the unemployment rate in the first place. Now, currently, unemployment is about 3.7%, which is pretty good on its face. But the unemployment rate actually only counts people who are currently looking for a job and not those who've given up. And as it turns out, a whole lot of people have given up. To get that information, you have to look at something called the labor force participation rate. And it shows that only about 62% of Americans are currently working or trying to work. That equates to about 5 million fewer people than we saw pre-pandemic. E.J. Antoni, who is an economist with the Heritage Foundation, he estimates that real unemployment is actually in the 6 to 7% range. So right then and there, that should tell you something. 62% of us are working to support the other 38% or so of people. That is not not good for productivity levels, not good for GDP, and as a whole, not good for our future forecast. But that still doesn't address the question of why you can't get a new job right now. If more people have dropped out of the workforce, then it would seem there would be more jobs to go around and you could have your pick. Clearly that's not happening, so let's keep digging. To really understand the sleight of hand that is at play here, you have to understand how to read the jobs reports. These reports are done by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS for short, and they come out every month. It's worth noting that the BLS is a government agency. And again, they are claiming that every month, hundreds of thousands of jobs are being created, which would be great if it were really true. But if you scroll down past the headline, it doesn't really seem that's exactly the case. First and foremost, 10 of 11 of the monthly job reports in 2023 had to be revised down significantly, meaning they came out and claimed that a ton of jobs have been created and then quietly revised that a few weeks down the road. Unsurprisingly, the media and the general public don't usually pay as much attention to those revisions. So there's your first problem. They are usually not creating as many jobs as they claim. But even more importantly, you need to look at the kinds of jobs that are being created. Now, I actually started covering this last October at our website, base-politics.com. So I'm going to pull some data from the September 2023 jobs report. And according to headlines at that time, non-farm payrolls had jumped a stunning 336,000 in September of 2023, while the unofficial unemployment rate stayed flat at 3.8%. It's pretty weird to have all these new jobs added and yet unemployment not fall, don't you think? But it gets even more sus than that. Of those 336,000 jobs they added, over 22% of them were government jobs. A government job is not equal to a job in the private market. People who are working in the private sector are productive. They are contributing to economic growth. They are creating value. People who are working in the public sector only survive based off of the backs of the people working in the private market. They're paid off of our taxes and our labor. They are literally leeches on society. And I don't want you to come for me on this because I recognize there are some people who work in government who are actually creating value for society, but not most of them. Not most of them. Most government jobs could go away tomorrow and you would never even notice it. Especially 22% out of 336,000 jobs in one month. That is crazy. Government is growing at an unsustainable rate. And that statistic held true throughout all of 2023. Nearly 25% of all job gains last year were were government jobs. We're talking hundreds of thousands of new positions. So you've got 5 million fewer people working, 5 million fewer people paying taxes at the same time government is ballooning. 
That is not a sustainable pyramid scheme, and it's certainly nothing to celebrate. On top of this factor, though, is an even worse statistic buried in the jobs report, which is that full-time jobs are diminishing quickly. The vast majority of jobs being added are part-time jobs. In that September report, of the 336,000 jobs added that weren't government, 151,000 of them were part-time jobs. At the same time, 22,000 full-time jobs were lost in September alone. Again, according to EJ and Tony, this is part of an ongoing trend. He said in October that the last three months had seen part-time positions jump 1.2 million while full-time roles had diminished 700,000. On top of that, in the January 2024 jobs report, they say they created 355,000 new jobs, but the labor force participation rate didn't change. So if more people aren't working, who's filling all these new jobs? The math isn't mathing, so let me explain their common core calculations for how they got there. Basically what they're doing is they are counting people who are working multiple part-time jobs multiple times in the numbers report. So if you lost your full-time job and now you're having to work two or three part-time jobs to make up for it, or if you kept your full-time job but can't make ends meet thanks to Bidenomics and got a part-time job to help supplement that, they're counting those all as unique new jobs. And they're like, yay, look, we did it. New jobs created. So the real reason you are applying to all these positions and can't actually get a job is because they are rapidly disappearing. Full-time salaried positions are evaporating quickly in our economy and being replaced with part-time jobs or government jobs. And just to give you some contrast with the government's numbers, I want to point you to the ADP National Employment Report, which is an independent measurement. And they only evaluate the private sector of the picture, and they base it on actual anonymized payroll data. And according to them, only 107,000 new jobs were created in January. The BLS said there were 355,000. So the moral of the story, kids, is don't get your data from the government, or if you do, do some digging to make sure you understand what the real numbers are showing. The economy's in the toilet, and everybody knows it, and it's probably going to get worse. And I don't want to rub salt in wounds, but I do want people to be able to make better decisions going forward. So I do want to remind you that in 2020, when they started passing all these stimulus bills, when they started spending tons of government money, when you were getting all these free checks... There were people like me who warned you there would be repercussions for that. These are those repercussions. The government cannot just spend, 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 and there be no consequences. This is why we need a very limited government that largely stays out of society and out of the economy. But for now, we're going to have to deal with the consequences of those decisions. All right, guys, if you like this episode, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week. If you like this episode, don't forget to check out others in my series, Hannah Explains It All Here, or you can watch my weekly show, The Base Politics Podcast, here.